In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I process raw images in Adobe Photoshop and teach you how you can take your photography to yet another level. The practice of photography doesn't just end when you capture a scene. You have to digitally develop that image and make it stand out from the crowd. I am going to show you how to do exactly that and make an artist out of you. Hey, now look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is part 7 and the final part of my photography tutorial series for beginners. If you're new to the channel and if you missed the first 6 videos, you can click on the playlist card right above me. And in case it doesn't show up on your device, I'll also add links in the description. Through the series, I've covered topics from the basics like manual mode to intermediate topics like natural light. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the processing of three different photographs of three different complexities. Each of them has been captured at different times of day under different lighting conditions. FYI, they were also taken in three separate continents where the climatic conditions drastically differed, thus affecting the look and feel of the photograph. If you enjoy this tutorial, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Image A was captured in North America's Arizona in August 2018 during the wet summers. Many of you may have recognized that this is the Grand Canyon photographed on a telephoto lens. The direction of light was overhead as the overcast sky opened up. Though it was mildly harsh light, I still wanted to photograph the various shapes, patterns and textures, not to forget the riot of colors as well. I even composed this boulder-like structure on the left as a foreground interest. Here's what the raw image looks like straight out of the camera and in the Adobe Camera Raw plugin. If you don't have Camera Raw installed for Photoshop, I'll leave a download link in the description. Alright, so straight out of the camera, the image looks very dull, desaturated and lifeless. In the EXIF data, you can see the camera settings that I used. I wish I used a smaller aperture instead of f2.8, but that's alright. The first thing you want to do in Camera Raw is go down to the workflow options. Ensure that your color space is set to Adobe RGB and your color depth is set to 16 bits and not 8 bits. This way, you're going to have more color information to work with. On the top right corner is the histogram and it's something that we're going to pay close attention to whilst adjusting the various sliders below. The left corner indicates the amount of blacks. Then we have the shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and the white to the extreme right. Because I like my photographs to be a bit on the brighter side, I'm going to push the histogram a little more to the right. I now have some areas that are slightly brighter than expected, so I'm going to reduce the highlights a bit. Let's add a bit of contrast as well. Press P to see a preview of the before and after. The histogram is now stretched and the photograph has a larger dynamic range. Be careful of going too far left or too far right. I'm going to play around with the clarity a little bit. It's going to add some mid-tone contrast and make the image appear sharper. I'm also going to increase the vibrance. As opposed to the saturation slider, vibrance pulls up the saturation of the muted colors to match that of the loud colors. Press P again and you can see the photograph come to life. All the adjustments we just did are called global adjustments because they affect pixels across the entire photograph. But what if you want to make changes to selective portions instead? The top of this boulder has some unwanted highlights and I find them a bit distracting. Navigate to the brush icon in the toolbar above. This adjustment brush helps you make selective adjustments that are called local adjustments. I'm going to reduce the highlights a bit decrease the scale of the brush and simply paint over portions that I find too bright. Check the mask box on the bottom right to visualize the affected areas. Look at the image for a little bit 
in case there's anything that needs addressing. Portions of the slope are a bit darker compared to the rest of it because of possible cloud cover. You can also see it towards the bottom. I'm going to click on new to generate a new adjustment brush and I'm going to reset the adjustment settings so that the previous settings don't get included. Let's increase the exposure just a little bit and paint over the darker areas. Check the mask box again so you can see what you're doing. A little more exposure and maybe some more shadows as well. I'm going to bump up the saturation of the mask to make sure that it's properly uniform. Let's go back to the global adjustments page. Compare the before and after a little bit more. The exposure can be reduced just a tiny bit. Much better. Lastly, after you're satisfied with all the adjustments, click on the detail icon. Here's where the image sharpening happens and I'm going to increase it to about 80. Remember, you don't want to over sharpen your image. Zoom into the shadows and you can see there's a significant bit of noise. But it's not visible in the brighter areas. In the noise reduction tab, increase the luminance to about 20. Let's push it to maybe 25. You can already see the difference. Press Command 0 on a Mac or Control 0 on a PC to zoom back out. These adjustments seem to be pretty good, so I'm going to click on Open Image at the bottom right and open the image in Photoshop. I still find this corner highlight a little distracting. It takes my audience's attention right away from the center where I want them to largely be focused. Because it's a small patch, I'm going to select the Spot Healing Brush and paint over any unwanted areas. And there you have it. Here's the before and here's the after. Let's look at image B. I photographed this landscape in the Himalayas of Asia in August 2019 during the monsoons. The symmetry of the distant mountains caught my attention and I used a telephoto lens here as well. The harsh top light illuminated the mountainscape in the foreground, whilst the dramatic cloudy sky covered the far-off mountain ridges in a cool blue shade. This created a coloured contrast. Here's what the raw image looks like in Adobe Camera Raw. Straight out of the camera, this image is also very dull and lifeless. It's intentionally underexposed just enough to preserve details in the snow-capped peaks and to not lose details in the shadows simultaneously. The first thing I'm going to do, which I missed out in image A, is correcting for chromatic aberration. You can do that by clicking on the lens correction icon and checking the remove chromatic aberration box. If I shot this photograph on a wide lens, I would also check the box below. Enabling profile corrections would correct the lens distortion and vignetting. In the EXIF data, you can see that I've taken this shot at f11, ensuring that there's ample depth of field and sharpness throughout. My white balance is completely off, so I'm going to fix that first. About 5400 Kelvin should be fine. Another way you can do this is by pressing the letter I. The color picker tool will show up and you can click on any area of your photograph that's white. You can see that the color temperature has gone up to 5700 Kelvin. Slightly on the warmer side, but I'm going to leave it at that. Again, I'm going to open up the exposure to the point where the highlights on the histogram are not blowing out. But now the histogram has no shadows and blacks. Let's give it some more range by reducing the highlights, reducing the shadows, and increasing the contrast. The histogram is starting to look much better now. Increasing the clarity will add some mid-tone contrast. Be careful not to go overboard because you'll completely destroy the natural look just for something that looks a bit grungy. Let's bump up the vibrance. Again, careful not to go too high. Stop for a bit and observe the image. Take your time and do not rush. A little saturation could also be added. Press P for the before and after. 
This progress looks good, but we are not finished just yet. Looking at the histogram, the left corner shows that the blacks are slightly clipping. That's probably because of this cloud shadow right here. I'm going to increase the blacks just a little bit to correct this. The histogram seems fine now, but I'll increase it just a little bit more to be safe. Observe the image again in detail. The snow-capped peaks in the background are too bright for my liking, so let's go into the local adjustments now. Make sure that you reset your brush before making any corrections. A smaller brush should do and I'm going to paint a rough mask over the areas that are too bright. Turn the mask on to visualize the affected areas. You can see that the brushing has spilled out and onto the sky. Not a problem at all, we'll correct that in just a moment. Scroll down in the local adjustment tab till you see the range mask setting and select luminance. As you can see, the slider goes from dark to bright. Move the selector into the bright range and you will only mask the brightest pixels. We still have a minor spill of the mask outside, but that's negligible. I'm going to reduce the highlights by just a little bit. Let's add another brush because the central mountain ranges look too dark and dull. This time, we'll move the luminance range to the dark side so only the dark pixels are affected. Play around with the slider until you're happy with the look. I still find it a bit dark so I'm going to bump up the shadows as well. Let's see what the dehaze slider can do. Yup, gonna add a tiny bit of that as well. Because the sky has some scope for drama, I'm going to select the graduated filter on the top and create a mask over the clouds. By turning the mask on, you can see a nice gradual effect in the sky. Pushing up the dehaze slider will achieve a grungy, moody look. Much better. Let's go back to the global adjustments. Press P again, check your progress and don't forget to cross-check the histogram as well. The blacks are losing details and it's the same cloud shadow as you can see. Once more, I'm going to open up the blacks just a tiny bit. The mountainscape in the foreground can be a bit brighter, so I'm going to open up the shadows there with a the local adjustment brush. A final preview and this looks pretty awesome. Zooming into the sky, you can see that the noise is very evident. Let's go back to the graduated mask and play around with the noise reduction setting. At zero, the noise looks very unpleasant. Somewhere around 50 should have a good result. Lastly, let's bump up the sharpening and the photograph is good to go. Let's look at image C. I photographed this moment of lion cubs in Africa's Maasai Mara that were barely a week old. This image is the most difficult of the three because of its extremely challenging lighting conditions. Looking at the processed photograph, you cannot really tell its complexity. Here's what the raw image looks like. The lion cubs and their mother were nestled safely within a dense bush that had a small opening, just wide enough to capture the moment from. What makes this photograph incredibly challenging is the fact that there are both extreme shadows of the interior and extreme highlights of the exterior to account for. This is a photographer's nightmare because you can only take a single exposure and you don't want to lose details in the shadows or the highlights. In this case, both. I decided to underexpose this image significantly even though my main subject was in the shade. It's easier to recover shadows than it is to recover highlights. Let the processing begin. 
In the EXIF data, you can see that my focal length was 506 millimeters. The unusual number was because I used the Canon 200 to 400 millimeter zoom lens with the inbuilt 1.4x teleconverter. Analyzing the image properly, there are two areas to be careful of. This dark area up here and these burnt out patches down below. Instead of opening the overall exposure, I'm going to bump up the shadows and lower the highlights just a bit. Don't forget to enable the chromatic aberration again. It's less evident in professional zoom lenses, but it's still a good habit to check the box. Let's restore the color a bit for better judgment. At this point, only local adjustments can help tackle the problematic areas one at a time. I'm going to start with the highlights first. The luminance range will help me select only the brightest pixels to work with. Let's create a second mask. The other brighter areas are this stem to the left and also these three spotlights on the lioness. Similarly, let's reduce the highlights there. Simply reducing the highlights isn't enough, so let's also play around with the exposure slider. Coming back to the stem on the left, it can be fixed with a third adjustment brush. The goal is to subdue every possible distraction in order to draw your viewer's attention straight to the subject. The exposure of the exterior is still very loud and distracting. Clicking on the spin will select the earlier mask that I created. Let's lower the exposure ever so slightly. The area to the right seems fine, but the brighter spots at the bottom are still problematic. There's not enough detail captured there and there's no scope for recovery. I'll show you how to fix this, but I'm going to do that later. Let's work on the shadows now and paint a rough mask over them. Using the luminance range mask, I'm going to select the darker pixels to work with. Because the area behind the lioness is also dark, you can see the mask spilling onto it. Hold the option key down and paint precisely over those areas to clean the spill. I'm going to open up the exposure and the shadows a bit. The image looks flat, so I'm going to increase the contrast and even add some clarity to make the blacks and midtones pop out. There's scope for some more saturation, so let's boost that too. Looking at the before and after, we've come a pretty long way, but we're still not finished. Because the cubs are my main point of focus, I want them to be brighter and draw all the visual attention. I've created another mask for them and I'm gonna open the exposure a little more. Go overboard with your settings and your subject will end up looking radioactive. You absolutely don't want that. Always keep subtlety in mind when post-processing. Instead of increasing the sharpness of the overall image, I'm going to sharpen only this adjustment mask. Zoom into it and make sure that you haven't over sharpened the image. This looks just about fine. There's a bit of noise in the shadows here, so I'm going to reduce it in the global adjustments tab and sharpen the mask of the cubs a little bit more. Looking at the overall picture again, the vibrance looks a little too much, so let's pull that back down. In the HSL Adjustments tab, I can increase the saturation of simply the yellows. Never rush when you're processing your images because you're gonna end up making mistakes. Take your time and analyze every bit of your frame. The bright stem on the left still seems a bit distracting, so I'm gonna reduce the highlights further. 
the foliage surrounding the lion cubs is also bright and distracting so i'm going to make yet another adjustment mask and reduce the shadows again make sure that you don't go overboard your processing techniques can literally make or break your photograph i'm not sure if you can tell but there's a slightly greenish tint to the image we can correct that using the tint slider to eliminate the green simply move the slider towards the magenta side let's open the image in photoshop and fix the burnt out areas below Let's draw around the problem areas with the lasso tool and press the delete button. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to do this roughly. Make sure that content aware is checked and hit okay. Photoshop will analyze the surrounding pixels and fill in the selected areas. We can repeat this for the other bright spots and finesse it until it looks satisfactory. No camera is going to shoot a scene just the way your eyes see it. You have to be able to understand light and also know how to control it in post. Sometimes you even have to sacrifice the quality of light while shooting because the moment that you witness is rarely repeated. It's sometimes so rare that you may never witness it again. As long as you don't clip the details in the highlights and shadows on your camera, you can still save the image in post. Remember that processing photographs and editing photographs are completely different things. Processing is simply restoring the exposure, white balance and saturation along with some minor manipulation to enrich your photograph. Editing is a later step. and that would involve the removal of objects from a scene or stuff like sky and background replacement always make sure that you keep your processing natural simple and true to how the scene was when you saw it camera raw is an incredibly powerful tool and you should use it to accentuate the beauty of a scene as opposed to creating it when it wasn't there to begin with if you enjoyed this tutorial please hit the like button and subscribe Your support is going to help me build this channel and community and take it a long long way. See you in the next one. If you're new to the channel and if you missed oh it's crazy in this particular tutorial I will it's always difficult. Through the series I've covered covered what are you saying mates if you don't have camera raw installed for photoshop i leave it down i leave it down oh whoa, 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 whoa. this is getting difficult again